everybody it's Megan here welcome to our channel today I'm making some more dolls first I'll go through my supply list for you mother gave me these thank you mom they are Creatology peg people four pieces and they're the lady ones and then I have here craft wood round beads various sizes this is some ribbon I found in Walmart it is Ofre. So it's kind of like a definitely winter look to it. it. Has some sparkle. It didn't cost very much, which is one of the reasons I picked this one out. There were some ribbons that were so terribly expensive. Then I'm making ballerinas. It's because I have been invited for the second time to a market at a nearby Nutcracker Ballet. So while I'm at the market I'm going to be selling these ballerinas and I hope each kid will want one. Each little girl at least. I'm also making the Nutcracker, the Mouse King and Uncle Drazzlemeyer. I don't think I'm pronouncing it right. And the Sugar Plum Fairy. So I have lots of Nutcracker character dolls for the children. You will need, I'm going to use hot glue gun. You could also use wood glue and tacky glue or some other good glue. And a drill. I have a job mate drill and mine is cordless, which I find very convenient as long as you've remembered to charge up this part. What would I need a drill for? You'll see in a moment. I have my drill bits, and the drill bit I choose is going to depend on the size of the bead I choose. The purpose behind the drill is to put a hole in there so when I put the bead in it, it's indented a little bit into the head. So it will glue in there really good and also look more like a bun on the ballerina's head. Because that's what tells you, you really hear ballerina um, you think of a ballerina when you see the bun in the hair and the tutu that screams ball ballerina. I'm using the one quarter inch for now. Drill bit. And we'll do one and see if that was a good choice. Here's my craft wood round beads. Again, I said, mentioned that they're all different sizes. So I'm going to pick out ones. To me... Actually, that might be a good size. That's the largest of the beads. That's the next size that looks too small. I'm going to go for the largest of the beads. What I'll do often when I open a package like this that didn't have a Ziploc is I actually will now put it in a sandwich bag. If I don't do this, I'm going to lose these beads. So this now goes in a sandwich bag. Now at the end of the craft, actually all the leftovers will go in this bag and it will get put away for storage for next time I make ballerina dolls. So let's start with the smaller drill bit first and see if it is large enough. If not, then we'll go up in size. I'm going to choose first before I start. I like to use the wood grain itself actually for faces. I, lately I'm leaving a lot of wood, unpainted wood on my projects. I just think that that's a nice natural look. So on this one, I've got this has some marks on it here, and this is perfectly smooth, so this is going to be my face. And I'm going to drill here so the bun is on the top of the head so you see it from the front. So I'm just going to drill at an angle right here. I'm going to go up another drill bit size. So <laughs> I made quite a substantial hole in her head for a curl. Don't worry, we're going to fill it. I'm going to put it in like this, and then that top of the bead is there, but I'm going to fill that in with wood filler. Half. Four dolls drilled and ready to go here. Fill that hole up with hot glue and we're going to stick the bead in. Okay. 
when the paint is applied, it will look more like hair. I'm going to make blonde haired dolls, blue, uh, brown haired dolls, and black haired dolls. Maybe a couple variations in between. Let's add this to the supply list. Forgot about the wood filler. I always forget about something. And then later we're going to use paint and varnish. All these things are as you want them to be. We don't have to fill in this hole. It makes sense for there to be a hole there because that's part of her hair. So maybe that's just, you know, where her hair parts. There's no messy buns in ballet, by the way. Neat buns only. It has to stay in place while they're jumping around. So I'm using the tinted, natural tint wood filler. I use it a lot on my dolls. Yeah, that's all I did. I just filled in the hole. It still has a bit of an indentation, but as I said, that would be quite natural in here to have a bit of an indentation. So let's let all this dry and then we'll paint. These dolls are ready to go now. I'm just going to give them a quick sand. Before I started the camera here, I'd taken a knife and just picked out any excess glue in there. You can also take the sandpaper and get it in there. So these buns are on really tight and kind of minimize the messiness of the glue. I have my girls here now painted. I've glued on a rose on the side of their of their bun here. See the back. The last step I have is to put on the clothing. And I'm going to use this sparkly ribbon I have. This Ofre ribbon from Walmart. I have Craft Smart white value yarn. I got that from Michael's. You can find this stuff pretty cheap. Like I think I paid two dollars for this whole thing of yarn. I mean it's just for crafts like dolls not to wear so that's a good yarn, good enough yarn for this. And you could also use a ribbon instead of yarn. I do happen to have a white ribbon so I'm going to stick with my white yarn. Here is my tool, and this is from Walmart, and it is Ofre brand. This is the larger container. Yeah, this is what I'm using. I think it's intended there at Walmart for people to be using in their weddings, because it says indoor. I think it's indoor outdoor so people use this to decorate archways and stuff for their wedding. I'm going to use it for these dolls skirts and I've been playing around with it and read someone else's blog about how they made theirs and the only way I found no way around it except for sewing but 
it doesn't have to be, you don't have to take more than maybe three minutes a skirt. It's not, this isn't going to be, a, if you had a sewing machine set up, you could use that, but my sewing machine is portable. It's currently put away. I'm not going to get it out just to make this skirt, but this is what it will look like. And what I've done is folded and folded and folded this material. And then eventually I fold over yarn here. See, these are folds. And then I sewed adjacent to the yarn without putting thread through the yarn because you need to be able to pull on the yarn or ribbon if you were going to use a ribbon. And that's what gives your tutu the look where it juts out instead of being downwards, like that. And then you can tie it up in the back and I will use hot glue to fix it to the doll. The reason I use hot glue so much is because children are gonna be playing with these and children can be quite rough. So hot glue makes things really solid. You need a lot of force, for example, to get that rose off. It's unlikely a child will be able to rip that rose off unless they're older and really want to. So I'm going to fold it over once, fold it over again, and here is where I'm going to take some white yarn and put the white yarn in the middle and fold it over the yarn. If you had a friend to help you at this point, that would be nice. I'm going to put this ruler down to hold it in place. While I get my needle and thread ready. You don't need too much thread because we're just going to loosely sew this. Like literally, this is going to take a minute. I'm not going to be too fussy with sewing. Okay, so I have this lady. I just put some fresh glue on her bodice here, so that's what that is. Fit this over her head. And we'll give the hot glue, hot glue it on. I'm also gonna make sure the bow is right at the back of her head. So here's between her eyes here. Yep, it's right there, it's at the back. We'll give it a Tighten up when I'm done gluing as well. A spot of glue there. Press that into her body without burning your fingers. I'm touching the fabric, not the not the hot glue. As I've done before, you can also use, sometimes I use my scissors like this and press. You can use any tools, probably better ones than scissors. But see, I'm not going to burn myself doing that. Oh, it's looking so cute already spot here and now I can it's glued on her good so I can really give this a tighten up maybe put a spot of glue here at the knot I just want this on secure so a child can't easily rip it off they can still rip it off, but it will have been excessive force, and you can't blame me. And to double knot it here. Oops, hang on, girl, don't tip over. So it has two knots. Perhaps I'll skip the bow. I could uh, cut these. I'm going to skip the bow, it's a little bit distracting. Because this has uh, been glued and double knotted, it's very tight. So I could cut these the same length as the skirt, or I could tuck them down. I think I'm going to tuck them down and glue them underneath. Let's lie her down, cut it to that length. It's probably 
10 different solutions you can come up with for this part. It's your craft, so do it how you want to. I look at blocks to get basic ideas, but then I do make it my own. Any other, you could put anything here besides those rows. You could put another flower, a bow, nothing at all. Teddy bear, you could get creative and do whatever you want. It's your, it's your art. Okay, so I have glued that yarn under. Let's give it another spot here. Instead of that distracting bow, I tucked it away. Now this is really glued on good. We can just kind of fluff it out, and there she is. Picked up ballerina. This is going to dry clear when it's done. I will finish all of them and show you in a minute. 